like to call this November 9th, 2023 Board of Education work session to order. George, can you take the roll? Mrs. Bissell? Here. Mrs. Kilbane? Here. Mr. Miko? Here. Ms. Tocek? Here. Mrs. Housel? Here. All present. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our district's three-year strategic plan is made up of four strategic priorities. Tonight's meeting includes an annual presentation about student wellness and success funds. This will have ties to one of our strategic priorities, aligning staff and resources, as well as an objective as part of this priority that develops plans to, to allocate resources to address the social, emotional, mental health, and behavioral needs of our students. Next on our agenda is public comment. I do not have any slips. With that, I will turn it over to George for the Treasurer's Report. Thank you, Ms. Sousa. Uh, tonight, for, your, um, for you, I have two presentations, as you touched on. One is the Student Wellness Report, uh, Athletic Fund, a quarterly update, and then an item to take um, action on. Uh, the first item is the Student Wellness Success Fund's annual presentation. I'm going to co-present that with Mrs. Falco. Uh, what this is is um, the student wellness success funds um, that we receive from the state um, as part of the 23-24 biannual budget. Um, one of the requirements was to um, that we have to have a board presentation uh, to the to the board and the community, and then also post it to our website. Uh, so this will meet that requirement. Uh, just a little history of the student wellness and success funds. In the state budget of 2020-2021 biannual budget, uh, the student success and wellness funds were originally approved as a separate state grant outside of the general fund. In the following biennium budget, 22 to 23 fiscal years, uh, the, the funds were moved uh, from the separate state grant into the general fund as part of restricted funds within the state funding formula. And then in the current state biennium budget, which began this fiscal year, um, 23 through 24, uh, it continues funding um, through the state funding formula as part of restricted funds um, and within the general fund as a, with additional requirements. And those being the additional requirements are, are now uh, re require these funds uh, must also include a plan with both a community mental health partner or a treatment provider and another community partner. Uh, before it was just one of those, now for each item, uh, there has to be uh, these two. As I m mentioned earlier, the plan must be shared at a public meeting and posted on the district website. Uh, half the funds must be used for mental and physical health care services. Um, all existing funds must be spent by fiscal year 24-25, which is next fiscal year. And what I mean by all existing funds is the funds that were given prior in the prior years. Uh, those must be spent. And then any new funds will allow for a one-year carryover. The allowable uses for the funds uh, defined by the defined in, um, under the state budget, which is also a part of Ohio Revised Code. Uh, the allowable uses for the funds are mental health services, uh, physical health services, culturally appropriate prevention services, homeless youth services, child welfare involved with youth services, community li liaisons and programming, family engagement activities, and before and after school programming. And for additional details, um, this presentation is linked on the agenda for anyone to view. Um, the link down here takes you to the ODE website, which has additional details for each item. Um, so the financial overview for the fund. So initially, when this was first distributed, the first two years, they were in a separate state grant. So we had to account for these in a state grant, which was under 460, uh, Fund 467. Uh, the first year, we were given $175,000. Uh, that first year, we didn't use the funds. We were developing a plan on how to use them, and we began using them in fiscal year uh, 21, which was the, um, the second year. And in total, what rolled over was 440000 We began using them in fiscal year 21 um, through the following years. And then the current fiscal year of, that original, of the original state grants, um, 
there is $17,959 left. Uh, that will be used up this year, and this goes for uh, the services that are provided by Nancy Lowry and, my, and Mindfully and, and Family First Solutions. And then the general fund uh, restricted, kind of mimicking the five-year forecast on this. Uh, in fiscal year 2022, uh, these funds started going into the general fund. Uh, we received 258000 in fiscal year 22. We spent 113000 uh, last fiscal year, we received an additional 224000 so we had 369000 available resources. Um, we spent 252000 uh, This year, we have $360,000 of available resources, and the plan is to spend 269000 and carry over $90,000. Um, as you will see in the, in the following years, each year, the, re the requirement from the state decreases. So by having that little bit of a carryover, it allows us to stretch it over. Um, a few years as the, those expenses that are associated uh, with the wellness funds um, continue to grow and um, the revenue will decrease. So at, at some point, um, we either have to continue to funding, we'll meet a requirement, but we'll have to make a decision do we want to keep funding what we're funding or reduce it based on the requirement that we receive. Uh, what we're spending the dollars on, um, I'll turn it, turn it over to Mrs. Palco who can kind of go into detail on what we're spending the dollars on this year. Thank you, George. As, as George outlined a few slides back um, on our focus and what we can use the funds for, we've elected to use the funds primarily on mental health services for students, um, on prevention as well, and um, finally on behavioral wellness. So those are the three areas I think that we focused in on as we looked at um, together as a district team how to spend these funds. And so one of the things that we have in our district is a partnership with um, Nancy Lowry Associates. It's, it's now um, termed Mindfully uh, and Family First Solutions. So we have two companies actually that work with our, our families and students. We have therapists. Um, this is beyond a school counselor. These are th actual therapists, behavioral therapists. Um, that can work not only with the student but also with their families and the unique part of this program is that they can provide that therapy within the school day. Um, Mindfully also offers um, therapy outside if, if families wanted to go to the office um, but primarily it's, it's such a convenience for families who can't get in or, or don't have the means to, to get their child to a provider that this therapy can happen within the school day and the counselors have spaces within our buildings to do that. Um, it really is on an, on an on-demand service, so the more that need the help, the more therapists we can allocate. I know both companies just in the last probably a few weeks have added another therapist to our um, district. And so what it, it typically does is it uses the family's insurance that they have to cover the cost of the therapy. So most families have insurance and can afford their co-pays and, and are able to access them, and so it is no cost to the district. What we allocated the money for, as you can see up there, is to provide therapy for students that might be experiencing or families that are experiencing a hardship. So sometimes there are things that happen. I know, you know, in the past we've had families that have experienced a traumatic event or, you know, going through a divorce or something where the insurance is lapsed or something is going on or their, their insurance is not necessarily accepted by this company. And so what we take a look at is they go through a process and then we're able to help either with a copay. Um, or fully fund um, the therapy because, you know, when something like that happens, therapy is needed immediately. So we try to do that. So that's where that one is allocated for. Um, for district social workers is our next area. So we were able to hire actually two social workers. I think one is covered by, by this cost. George, is that correct? Bo both, both of them, them, are. them are. Okay. The cost there makes up for both of them. That's right. Okay. So what this ha th this is an another level. Our social workers are also therapists and can provide that therapy, but they also have access to lots of services and help for families and provide that wraparound service and work in conjunction with other, other therapists, families, and the district to provide um, ongoing therapy. And what's nice about it is they are there all the time. Um, so if there's something that happens, they can be easily accessible and, and work directly with the student um, as needed. Our elementary school counselor, so this, these dollars allowed us to employ um, one full-time counselor at every single building. Uh, so we no longer have counselors that have to travel between, especially our elementary buildings, 
and uh, they are able to provide additional lessons that way because they're not traveling and then there's no lapse in service if a student needs their counselor they're there every single day and they don't have to wait until Tuesday till they show back up so it's been a really um, big value and I will just share our elementary school counselors collaborate so nicely together that they're working on the same lessons and the same experiences for kids and so um, that helps make it an equitable experience for all kids and finally, our PBIS consultants, um, so this is our community partner here where we have two consultants in the district that attend our PBIS meetings within our buildings regularly. Our administrators can reach out to them if they have questions or need talking points or assistance in filling out some of the paperwork that goes along with this program and this mandate that we um, go with. And, and it's, you know, I've been in several meetings where they're there and they're able to quickly clarify if there's misconceptions about PBIS or uh, teachers have questions about the data or exactly what they're supposed to do. They're there to clarify that and immediately and, and get, make sure that the teams are on the right track. So overall, that is what we're spending our money on. And then, as George mentioned, we, we do have to have community partners. And so we primarily partner with the Educational Service Center of Northeast Ohio. And then Mindly Philly and Family First Solutions also serve as our partners. And they are supporting all of these areas, um, ongoing support. And that's it, if there's any questions. I just have one question. Can you clarify the difference between the like degrees or licensures of um, the therapist versus what the school counselor has? Right. So a school counselor is, you know, they are they are licensed to the, through the state as a school counselor. So they are there to primarily, you know, meet with students that have, you know questions obviously with school academics programming those kinds of things as well as if they're having some maybe temporary trouble at school you know maybe they have an, they're having an argument with another peer so to kind of help them you know regulate their emotions in the moment and come up with maybe a plan for working with their peers or working with an adult if that's the case so it's more of a temporary issue if it goes deeper where there are you know other factors maybe there are other you know deeper family issues or there's been traumatic events, they would typically recommend them to um, one of our therapists to work with or our social workers to work with. Um, especially if it's gonna be ongoing therapy that is you know, dealing with, I won't get into too many details, but dealing with just emotions and ongoing issues, um, you know, school counselors typically are not equipped to deal with that kind of um, therapy. Do school counselors typically come out of the teaching track as opposed to the? Not necessarily. We, we do have some counselors that were teachers and now are counselors, but we also have counselors that just went to school for school counseling. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you. Thank you. And then moving on to uh, the next item. Um, at the beginning of the school year, because we're planning out the budget process, um, the board we had a series of presentations regarding athletics and increasing the athletics uh, department's budget. Uh, with that, the board increased the athletics department budget by 150,000 and had asked for quarterly updates as to that budget in action. So I have uh, Denny and Jason here to kind of give an update. Uh, Denny will cover the high school and Jason will cover the middle school. Thank you, George. We appreciate the opportunity to share, um, you know, a quarterly update since the fall sports season um, has just ended. Um, so overall, looking at the high school revenue, um, you know, some of the numbers you'll see is just some of those are just sports that haven't happened yet. Um, whereas the fall sports um, on the next slide is more of a snapshot of um, exactly what we brought in and a lot of our revenues are going to be strictly ticket based from our ticket sales um, so as you'll see for the high school um, all these are our fall sports and then what we budgeted and then what we actually brought in um, a lot of the increase that you'll see was the um, the GCC conference as a whole in May voted to approve a ticket raise um, so instead of having um, student fees they went more to a flat rate for students and adults what we were seeing 
across the board is a lot of adults were purchasing student tickets at a lower rate. Um, so to eliminate that, what we did is as a conference, we went to a flat fee for adults and students. Um, so um, the data here, boys soccer um, was a lot less because we had 42 less home games this year. Uh, last year, I believe they had 12 home games, and this year we had five or six. That was it. Um, so next year, I, I would venture to say that that schedule is going to be a lot more balanced um, with our scheduling and our conference. Um, and then last year, we also didn't have um, you know, the Shaker Heights, the Cleveland Heights that we did this year. Um, so I think our schedule is going to be a lot more balanced than next year to have an 8-8 eight and eight or a 9-8 and eight. Um, home versus away um, uh, schedule. Uh, football went up almost 21,000. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with, again, the ticket increase from our conference, but also we did host or, you know, we brought back the community tailgate the first game, which was a huge, huge success for us, um, you know, so that generated a lot of the population. Um, I, I do think the elementary nights help. Um, as well as the youth nights that we offer for a lot of our other teams to come. Um, so I look for that number to stay, you know, pretty consistent. Um, and also we changed our schedule up a little bit. Um, so I think just adding some newer and different opponents helps bring a lot more traffic to us. Um, and I do think next year our schedule is going to be the same but flipped. Um, so our home and away schedule is going to be balanced, but I think our population is going to be very, very similar to what it was um, this year. Um, and then the other sports obviously went up. Um, you know, our girls' soccer went up almost 5,000. Um, there were more home, home games this year than last year. Obviously, the reverse of boys, when our boys are playing home, our girls are on the road. Um, and then also with the success that they had this season as well, that brought a lot more in. They also did a lot more um, community nights. Um, so that was a huge, huge turnout. And then they also hosted for, for the first time ever a weekend showcase where we had four schools um, and we played varsity as well as a lot of JV games. So there was more, uh, you know, just student or more um, uh, uh, revenue just based off of, off of that showcase that we hosted. Um, and then volleyball, um, you know, went up a little bit, um, same reasons, um, a couple more home games, um, and then the increase in ticket prices from our conference. Um, so overall right now, or, you know, from the fall sports, we were positive, um, 26,000, um, and we had budgeted 101,000. So moving into expenses, um, and again, this is for all sports in total for the uh, high school athletic department, the total expenses were budgeted at 323000 uh, Year-to-date actual so far, 132000 uh, For the most part, for the fall sports, they're trending under. However, it, um, I couldn't break out. The cat each sport has like the various categories, game workers, supplies, um, and equipment. Uh, it would have been too much to break those out individually. Uh, but within each sport, uh, right now, some of the game workers that we're seeing uh, the cost for the game workers are trending a little bit over budget. Um, while we're able to cover that under some of the savings that we have under those expenses, uh, but for the fall sports, we still have one more payment to do for fall game workers to get that finalized. Um, for the football, you'll see a bigger variance for under budget, and that's a lot of that expenses happens after the season. Um, once the season's over, uh, the equipment gets uh, sent out to be expect inspected and reconditioned to to be prepared for next school year or next football season, but that's covered under this year's budget for expense and um, also replacing the uniforms for the upcoming uh, season. So right now it's, um, for the most part, those fall sports are trending under, but we have one more payment for game workers to get that finalized and the game workers were um, trending a little higher based, based on what we had, but based on how we budgeted. Turning it back over to Denny to talk about some of the new expenses that um, were purchased with the uh, budget for, for the school year. Sure. Um, so you'll see the top here um, are just some of the new things that we were able to purchase. Um, you know, the basic needs, obviously, football pants for games. Um, uh, you know, girls' soccer, white, white and green jerseys. We were actually 
Um, with that, um, last year we were out of compliance. Our home jerseys did have too much white in it, so we were, um, uh, I think it was given 18 months to correct that issue. So we were able to do that with our white and, and our green jerseys. Um, girls tennis got new tank tops. Um, our girls basketball, um, uh, you know, those are fill-in jerseys, um, either with ripped or torn jerseys, numbers falling off from the stickers, um, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's what that fill-in number is. Um, you know, and then obviously football helmets, the number of our football participants continues to grow. Um, so the number of, you know, helmets that we have to have for the correct sizes um, is what that cost is. Um, our golf team um, has played in numerous tournaments and league without any sort of shade. So we were able to purchase golf golf umbrellas for them. Um, that is going to help them. Um, we are redoing our entire track area, our shot area, and our discus area is moving towards the new um, uh, tennis courts. So the discus circle was purchased to be able to do that, to move that um, you know, completely over to that area. And then we just got done with um, lacrosse goals and nets that are going to be placed at the middle school. Um, right now down there they have old like plastic practice goals and nets that are bent um, from, the, from the weather. Um, so to be able to have that down there now, there is not the transporting of our game goals and our practice goals from the high school to the middle school and vice versa. So that's able to stay down there. Um, some things that we're looking forward to this winter and, and spring, um, baseball hats, um, you know, um, that's a uniform cost for us. Um, um, some girls wrestling tournament fees. We've seen an abundance of girls, um, you know, um, and their interest in wrestling. I think right now we have 11 girls, um, you know, that have been interested in it. So be able to provide them tournaments to go to that they are just strictly wrestling other females um, and not males, um, but then also being able to go and do some league matches with some other schools that do have um, – a girls wrestling program um, a volleyball net storage cart that's going to keep our volleyball net in good and clean condition that's a brand new net um, and with our PE classes using it as well as the volleyball team as well as boys volleyball it gets a lot of use so being able to keep that nice and untangled and clean is something that we think is valuable for the programs um, you know um, some uniforms for the boys and girls lacrosse teams and then as George mentioned, the potential purchase of helmets if some are seemed cracked or not usable or just are deemed to not or are um, past their warranty date. Um, and then just some of those items that I talked about in, in action, as you can see, um, you know, a girl's soccer uniforms, um, football helmets, football pants, uh, girls' tennis tank tops, the umbrellas for golf. Um, are just some of the items that were able to be used. And then um, I wanted just to touch on, you know, kind of give you guys a snapshot of where our progress has been made with our sports. Um, so just looking at the GCC over the last three years, these are where our teams have finished conference-wise. Um, you know, and obviously some of the numbers went up and some of them went down. Um, with you know 2023 with two new schools coming in to our league that pushed our number to seven in some of the sports and six in other sports um, but for the most part you can see that you know um, we've had pretty good success in a lot of our programs um, you know still some work to do but I will say three fall teams that had state qualifiers this year I think is a first in a long time um, you know our um, you know, our girls cross country team made states for the first time in 13 years. We had a boy golfer that made the state tournament for the first time, um, and then um, you know our girls soccer program making it to the state um, state semifinals. Any questions on the high school recaps budgets before I turn over to Jason? All yours. Thanks, Danny. <clears throat> All right, so this first slide you'll see 
the revenue for all the different sports at the middle school, you're only going to see activity mostly in just the, the fall sports. So, George, if you go to the next slide, it breaks out the revenue that we had in fall sports. And uh, we projected between volleyball and football to have about $10,000 in ticket sales, and we had about 11 and a half. So we're in a pretty good spot there. Moving along to the next slide. Um, the, the expenses were in a pretty good spot there. Similar to the high school, you'll see a lot of money left over in the football line. And that's because a lot of those expenses happen after the season when you're decommissioning helmets, getting stuff reconditioned, and then replacing some damaged items. And um, looking at volleyball, we came way under what we had projected. A part of the new budget this year, we, we had scheduled to buy volleyball uniforms, which, which we did. Um, but we found a much cheaper option that was still a high quality. So we came in under. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit more of that because we replaced two nets in the beginning of the season. As the season went on, two more wore out, so we're, we're in the process of replacing those. You done? Yeah, I was done. Okay. Thanks. Um, middle school budget in action, those are just some snapshots of the jerseys we bought for cross-country, football, volleyball, and then the, the volleyball equipment that we bought, the, the nets and the crank systems. Um, Looking at the next slide. I skip a slide. Oh, I think I skipped the slide. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that breaks down some of the new expenses we had this past fall. So eighth grade football jerseys. It, actually, that backs up a little bit further beyond fall. So at the end of last school year, we bought eighth grade football jerseys um, and cross country singlets. Uh, this fall, we bought iPads for our ticket sellers. We were having to borrow those from the high school last fall, and we were leaving ourselves short with some tech on certain days. So I had to get a couple for the middle school. Volleyball nets and cranks we, we bought this year because they weren't in working order anymore, and then volleyball uniforms. Looking at some more expenses that are to come that are new, seventh grade football jerseys we'll, we'll replace at the end of the season, wrestling singlets, wrestling equipment, uh, the two more volleyball nets I mentioned, track hurdles, basketball equipment, and coat shirts. And then we talked about that one. And then fall recap, seventh grade football, they went undefeated in conference play, which was a huge success. Eighth grade football, they had lots of injuries. I, I think they had four broken wrists in a matter of two weeks. It was, I don't even know how that happens, but it did. Uh, but they had a lot of guys step into roles they weren't used to, and they did awesome for what they were forced into that um, this past fall. Seventh grade volleyball, they killed it 27-7 and seven between both teams. Uh, eighth grade volleyball, they won 12 games, but that almost doubled the amount that that class won last year. So there was a lot of growth shown with that team. Girls cross, cross country, their season highlight was probably the second place finish at the Keystone Invitational. And the boys cross country, the last race of the year was incredible. So it was wet course, it was cold, and 18 of the 27 boys, I don't remember the exact numbers, but they're up there, they all PR'd, which, which you want to see. You want to see at the end of the year these kids getting faster, getting stronger, and that was that just incredible for, for any team to do that. Um, intramurals, we had volleyball and running, 31 runners, 60-something volleyball players. This winter, we're going to have bowling and basketball for intramurals again. And, um, and yeah, that's it. The next slide. Uh, so when we came to you guys last year, <coughs> part of our rationale to um, ask for a bigger budget was the, the participation numbers keep growing and growing and growing. And we forecasted um, an increase this year. We got more kids than we even thought. So this fall, compared to last fall, we had 100 more kids, high school, middle school combined, uh, which is, I'm, I mean, that's just so awesome. Um, I can't read the numbers up there, but you can see them. High school and middle school, there were 30-some and 60-some maybe. And then we added the extra eighth grade volleyball team this year and then the, the cheerleading squads for fall. So even if you take those numbers out, those new kids out, we still had 52 new kids in sports. And um, your budget is just helping these kids become better leaders, better people, and we just can't thank you enough for that. So 
And that's it, unless you have any questions. Any questions or comments? Cool. Thank, Thank you. you guys. We appreciate you guys being here. Yep. Thank you. No. You ready to move on? <laughs> All right, and then the last item that I have uh, is a resolution to pre proceed with the submission of school improvement bonds, a resolution determining to proceed with submitting the question of the issuance of school improvement bonds in the aggregate principal amount of $136 million to the electors of the Strongsville City School District pursuant to Section 133.18 of the Revised Code. I think this is a good time um, to table this discussion and take the opportunity to discuss what happened to our renewal levy on Tuesday. Um, I want to open it up for comments, questions, um, just how we want to move forward. Well, I'll at least start with uh, the results. So these are preliminary results, they're not final results. But according to the uh, Board of Elections, Cuyahoga County Board of Elections, uh, 8,328 people or voters voted for issue 14 and against was 9,712. So that was 54 to 46%. 54% were against it, 46% uh, were for it. If we compare that to when the levy was originally passed in 2019, the percentages have flipped. In 2019, approximately 54% of the voters were for it. Approximately 46% of the voters were against it. The numbers obviously are different. Um, the, uh, the, uh, when it was originally passed in May, it was a primary election, not a general election. So um, the, uh, the numbers were different. But I think it makes sense that, A, we need to wait for more of the voting results to come to come out uh, the county will give precinct by precinct results um, <clears throat> i know in conversations with george we've already already been looking at uh, some comparisons with other with other districts other uh, communities around us to try to gauge uh, what what was different when in may the community supported an additional tax levy so when it was first passed, it was a pure additional tax. And uh, on Tuesday, that was a renewal, but the renewal failed. So I think it, it behooves us to uh, be patient, to take some time to figure out uh, what we think uh, the res what, what we think the community was telling us and what we think our response is as a board. Any other questions or comments? I don't have anything additional to add other than to say that I agree with Richard that we need to look at everything when it, when it becomes available, slow down, um, or obviously table this yes. bond uh, issue. We, we, I don't see how we move forward with this at the present moment without full information. So um, thanks for all those details, Richard. I appreciate it. Sure. I think, it, I mean, it, I think it's common sense to say we, uh, we as a board have no business saying let's move forward with a bond when obviously we need to uh, understand why uh, what we consider to be our operating funds, uh, our regular operating funds, and it was a renewal. So we need to investigate that and then uh, determine that. I was just going to ask George if you can review with us our uh, deadline dates for mm -hmm. when we do need to make decisions for the May, I'm sorry, for the March primary next year. Yep, so just kind of working backwards. Mm -hmm. um, the filing date for uh, the, the renewal levy is December 20th, and the bond filing date is December 12th. Um, for the, I'll just start with the bond because it's simpler. For the bond, we just have uh, one resolution to approve um, for that, so we have December or November 21st board meeting and December 7th board meeting left prior to December 12th. Um, also, there could be a special board meeting in between as well. And then for the renewal levy, um, there's it's a two-step uh, resolution process. Uh, resolution one, authorize, um, uh, 
the board authorizes me to go to the county to get it certified. And then once we get that certification, resolution two um, then comes back to the board, and that's the one to formally put it on the ballot for March. Um, again, we have November, for two resolutions, we have November 21st and December 7th, unless there's a special board meeting somewhere in between. But all said and done for the renewal has to be, everything has to be approved and filed with the Board of Elections on the 20th by 4 o'clock. And same with uh, the bond. If, if we were to move forward with the bond, um, that filing date is December 12th for the county at 4 p.m. Are you thinking about moving on with the bond? I, I'm confused. I thought we were going to set that aside and worry about the renewal, or am I wrong? No, I think, I think that's that the consensus. My, again, I, wanna, I want to take the time to review the, the voting data, but I would, I would think that would be the course of action. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see us at this stage going forward yeah, with a bond. Do. Yeah, uh, we can't do too. It would be foolish at best. Yeah, I agree. Richard, do you happen to know how long it takes the county to s give the precinct by precinct data? It, it's already out. The precinct by precinct stuff? So? They're still counting. They're still counting. Well, mm -hmm. it's pretty much it's out for may maybe other things. I don't know. But I know for some races it's out. There is the pr the the, the precinct by precinct. Yeah, I've not. I looked at it for. I looked for it today. I did not see it today for Strongsville. I would expect we'd see it within a week. Okay. Um, you'll see. I forget the the jargon, but there's the uh, preliminary results, and then they have to allow enough time for absentee ballots mm -hmm. that uh, were mailed on the deadline of Monday, but the postman for whatever reason hasn't delivered them so then those have to come in those have to be tabulated and then you will get final numbers um, and we should have those before the next board meeting when I checked the Board of Education calendar today it said the 13th they would stop counting right if the mailman hasn't shown up yet yes by the 13th <laughs> I mean but I think you could have a pretty well idea without those being counted that's Correct. What I'm yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you'll know where we won and where we lost. <laughs> right. Right. So. Well, we do need to give George direction um, about putting the um, resolution on for the next meeting for the for the renewal levy in March. Are we ready to do that? I would be ready to prepare the language to have okay. it on the agenda, and then at the the same way we're tabling it yes. now, if. If the tea leaves are such that we don't feel it's wise, we would table it. But if the tea leaves are such that we feel it's wise, we would be in a position to move forward. Okay. Okay. So just so I'm clear, for the um, November 21st board meeting, have resolution one for the renewal levy. And then um, just what's the direction for the... the for the bond, bond I think consensus is to not it is tabled until we untable it yes. okay yes. does anyone have any other questions or comments regarding how we'll move forward nope okay yeah, well, that, we're good that concludes my report if there's nothing else Great. thank you george and we'll turn it over to Dr. Riba. Thank you, Ms. Housem. Uh, nothing under my section for tonight. Uh, under business services, we do have uh, one item as a gift be resolved upon my recommendation that the following gift be approved. Uh, Gregory Modic donated $1,500 to cover the approximate cost of the installation of a section of sidewalk at Strongsville Middle School. So to give some details, first of all, how phenomenal is this? So, so Greg uh, was a part of our elementary facilities uh, planning committee. Um, he's got a, kids at the middle school. Uh, and they does the, he does the drop-off loop and um, said, hey, I've got this idea that in the back part, I think we can move traffic further if we extend the sidewalk a little bit, kind of mapped it out and drew it. He met with Steve and Keith and went over there. And we didn't ask, but he said, hey, let me donate the materials to do it uh, so you guys can have the sidewalk. And so I think they're planning on having it in the spring. Um, so uh, it will... Uh, be poured in the spring, extend the, the uh, sidewalk on the Olympia side of the property, 
to connect a few sidewalks that way you know seven to eight cars can unload at the same time instead of a, a handful that will hopefully speed up uh, so I appreciate somebody saying hey you know again very generous that he wanted to cover the cost but to say hey here's a way to speed it up I've mapped it out for you and I got the opportunity to meet his wife today, subbing in one of our classrooms. Yeah, so it was nice. awesome to meet her as well. So, I know, Greg. Yeah, thanks, so thank thanks you, to Greg, Greg. for that, that great <laughs> donation great. And, and the idea to solve a problem that he was experiencing as a parent. So we appreciate that. Um, under curriculum, uh, we have a field trip, uh, overnight trip that has already passed uh, because of the timing. As, as Denny shared, uh, congratulations to our girls cross country team. Uh, they made states between our meetings, so this is after the fact, but be it resolved upon my recommendation that permission be granted to the Strongsville High School girls cross country team uh, that traveled to Columbus to participate in the state championship meet. It took place November 3rd to 4th, and transportation was via school bus, and expenses were paid by the athletic boosters. Under student services, we have one, one item, uh, be it resolved upon my recommendation that the Strongsville Board of Education enters into an agreement with ASG Education Services, Inc., uh, the LEAP program for placement of a student with disabilities for the 23-24 school year. And we do have one uh, item under HR, so I'll turn it over to Jenny for that. I thought you were just going to keep going. You're I doing could, so but, good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just under um, Human Resources this evening, we have two resignations for uh, non-certificated staff. And we have no report under technology, so that concludes my report. All right. Thank you. Now that brings us to item J, adoption of the consent calendar. Action by the Board of Education and adoption of consent calendar at this point of the agenda means that all items appearing in this agenda denoted as type dash action consent, which items constitute the consent calendar, are adopted by one single motion unless a member of the board or the superintendent requests that such items be removed from the consent calendar and voted upon separately. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. And does anybody have anything that they would like to add or remove? Okay. George, can you take the roll? Ms. Docek? Yes. Mrs. Cobain? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mrs. Hausel? Yes. Mrs. Bissell? Yes. Motion carries. Brings us to Board of Education Other. Um, I know we normally do this in a regular meeting, but I just want to let everybody know that we have a very busy week next week. Tuesday night we have a facilities meeting here at the board building. Wednesday night we have a diversity council meeting here at the board building. And Thursday night we have a finance committee meeting at the oh, high, high school. school. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All of them are, uh, well, I think this Tuesday night's at 7, Wednesday and Thursday are 6.30. 6.30. Mm. Yeah, 6.30. 6.30. Yes. And those meetings are open to the public. So that's why I just want to make sure that everybody knew that we were having those meetings. Anybody have anything others to add? Uh, just this weekend is um, the Strongsville Education Foundation. It's casino night. I'm sure they would be more than happy if you want to buy a ticket. <laughs> uh, it sounds like fun. It's at the rec center. I think it starts at 7. They've worked really hard. So if there's anybody out there that didn't know about it, you know, you can go to their website and get tickets. Any other others? I was just going to say that uh, tomorrow, November 10th, is the 248th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. So if you know any Marine Corps uh, service people, wish them a happy birthday. And then it, uh, we shouldn't fail to remember that on November 11th is Veterans Day. So if you know any veterans, thank them for their service. And then November 12th is Diwali. So if you know anyone who celebrates Diwali, wish them a happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Any other others? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on. Executive session. We do have need for executive session tonight to discuss. Uh, to consider the employment or dismissal of a public employee, to review negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment, and to consider matters required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Ms. Stopchik, second by Mrs. Kilbane. George, can you take the roll? Ms. Stopchik? Yes. Ms. Kilbane? Yes. Mr. Miko? Yes. Mrs. Hausen? Yes. And Mrs. Bissell? Yes. We'll enter into executive session at approximately 7.55.
We do not foresee having any additional business to discuss in public, so I'd like to wish everyone a good night.